things that really kind of brings people together in a beautiful sense. People open their homes up to you, you know, people open their hearts up to you, people wish no, nothing but love on you, really. That's, that's a nice, nice little collection of things to take, take home with you and tell other people about. We've lost up certain aspects of community. You kind of suspect that people are a bit afraid and, and don't really know much about Africa and tend to see it as a place of famine, blight and disease. If I don't expect everyone to be listening to the music on the radio everywhere because that would be the same that would be just as that would just be ridiculous you know and it's never going to happen give people the chance to really you know think about where we're going forward and I just think there's so many lessons you know to go back to something to the biblical thing there's so many lessons to be learnt here much much more positive things to be talked about. A great person, a great guy, Damon, uh, asked me, and I, uh, it seemed like a stupid thing to pass up. The experience of coming here has been like being young again in a way that you can be so excited about something. Look, it was it's 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 really heavy, but it's always great to also have so many feelings. And, uh, coming back to the not being jaded, you know. So look, watching people here has been um, an uh, unforgettable experience. This is a place where people allow themselves to have the emotions that we probably all have to music. People get, you get excited by music anywhere, you know. And um, there's just a different set of traditions and ways that they listen to music. The main reason I came here is because I have songs to finish. <clears throat> and that's a hard thing for me to do. And I, um, figured that by coming here and listening to people playing and watching them play, I would feel like I need to go home and get to work. <laughs> I put my head, I lose my strength, just 
to keep the corner of But there are no hats that stars fall apart. I am Baba Mala. I come from uh, Senegal, West Africa, and uh, right now I'm in Lagos uh, because of uh, Africa Express. <laughs> Africa Express is an opportunity for a lot of people who really believe uh, in uh, the fact that uh, human beings on earth can be together in one project to make a better life and to talk about uh, music and culture in a very positive way. Yes, it's a message to everyone of you out there. <laughs> opportunities also to, to the ones who need to be heard, to, to need to be to be inside of the music business, to have talent, to have real, real, real talent, and want to be heard. What's really, really interesting in this project is that. Uh, all the musicians and all the people who are participating in this project, journalists, people from the record companies, you know, we all believe that African music can really help this continent to have a way, to have a voice, to have a place in the bigger package, which is the world. Hi, my name is John McLean. I'm an alien. Well, I'm a member of the Aliens. Um, I was lucky enough to travel to the Congo with the African Express crew. It was one of the highlights of my musical career and my first time in Africa. So, in at the deep end. My memories are of extreme colour, haze, skull, beautiful people, endless wonderful musical jams and fine African dancing. I first heard of Tanaron's music when we played with them at Glastonbury a few years ago. Another musical highlight and I've since rinsed their album. crop of skinny jean guitars, but melody, groove, atmosphere, which seems to be lost in most contemporary music in Britain, as far as I can hear. such a different style of music to what I play or what I listen to anyway so I mean that in itself is, is quite a challenge. We're playing different styles and so we're kind of the two mashing together and you know what we're learning from them and gaining from them hopefully you know they're learning and gaining things from us. The 
great thing about being with a group of people that are, you know, from different backgrounds, but, you know, play a lot and got a lot of musical knowledge, as well as learning from you know, the Congolese people that we meet, we're also learning a lot from each other. themselves to the table and what they've got to offer and then everybody just mashes in together. It's always about what the, you know, the end music sounds like, it's never about the individuals. They're just jamming, just, just kind of, you know, just playing around you know, the central rhythm, the central melody. And, electric atmospheres. I've seen a world that I never knew like existed, basically. I've never been to somewhere like this. I mean, just, just the whole thing, I'm sure I'll take a lot of different things from it. But probably take me a while to comprehend them. I decided to bring this uh, ba a baglamar. It's a Greek instrument, it's a small version of bazooki. But I'm not an expert on Greek music either, but I thought it would be uh, a nice little portable instrument um, to bring away with me. And it turned, it turned out to be, to be really good, I think. On the first night when we went to Salif's, it was just incredible vibe. When he played, it was just like absolutely amazing, and there was Amadou and Miriam there, and, and it was, and then and then some other people got up and played and stuff, and it was like everybody was great. And then at the at the last minute, they were like, you know, "Get up, do something." So I was I was nervous basically. I was very nervous, but I didn't think twice. I just thought, "All right, I'll try and do something." I've come here to play music, you know, so I'm going to have to do it at some point or another and I th I'm glad I took that opportunity. I felt afterwards, I was like, whew! I'm free and I'm speaking on behalf of Africa Express. I'm actually the official mouthpiece of Africa Express. Actually, I'm taking over the whole thing. I'm, I'm pushing gaming out. So, uh, yeah, I'm taking charge. Blame, blame, in your pride. You start to lie, to survive. I think it was very much like playing the Apollo Theater in Harlem. I think if they love you, they're gonna like lift you up to the heavens, and, but if they don't like you, they're gonna let you know, and it's a real sinking feeling. <laughs> It was without a doubt the craziest show I have ever played in my life. Yeah, I'm getting something together, you know, with 20 other people that you've never played with before, and like getting a bunch of music together, you know, is uh, you know a challenge without a doubt. Seventy percent of it is good. At least the 70% of what I did was good. <laughs> <laughs> In 
anybody, come play the shrine. The shrine is where it's at. If you can succeed at the shrine, you can succeed anywhere. Motherfucker. My name is Norman, Norman Cook. Uh, more professionally, I'm known as Fatboy Slim. And I am a record producer, a DJ, an artist from Brighton, England, who's come over to Mali. I think it's a sort of cultural observer. So I had a limited knowledge, but not of West African music. Um, and one of the first things I learned when I got here is I've got a hell of a lot to learn about world music. Damon never really explained what the idea was. I think he was deliberately vague with all of us. Brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, I want to tell one of some kind story. I think Damon had a kind of master plan that he wasn't telling us. I see this kind of psychedelic woman for some nightclub and I ask each kind of rhythm and each uh, featured instrument it brings about a different kind of riff. And then you add Damon and Scratch to the equation and it takes on a whole different whole different thing. Two way you get that kind tall button. Now what? Then cat mean say that dress where woman they wear, where they see all them legs on anyway as for the accessibility. The accessibility of the rhythm and this kind of unassuming nature of it. I'll be a lipstick them them way if they make money feel shy like silver. And last of all, lick me. There's so many wonderful musical moments. I think we've got enough for an album. If, uh, I don't know if that's part of Damon's master plan, but that would be my suggestion. I want to sing some song just now with you all go here. Well, I say, psychedelic woman. Hey, I'm Vivi Brown. I'm here um, in Africa, Nigeria for the amazing Africa Express. Right now we're here on the stage just rehearsing before we do a show in front of 5,000 people. I wasn't really aware of African music so potently until I came here and I just feel so inspired. You know, a lot of the music that we listen to nowadays, I can hear the influences within this African music, which was at, at the beginning. Um, before jazz, before blues, it was, it was African music. First, it was just like what he wanted to do about the whole trip and, and what it represents and what he's trying to create. And I, I wanted to do whatever I could to be involved in it. And uh, he mentioned it to me about like six months ago. And then I was like, all right, cool, you know, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Very happy to, to, to come down here and do the trip and, and see all the culture, the food, the people, uh, the music, which is like unbelievable. <laughs> Salif was like phenomenal. Like that, that for that to be the first night, and then with Miriam and and, and, and Madhu, and it was just like whoa. <laughs> It just sounded like he was just, whatever he was thinking, that's what was coming from out of the speaker. Being in an environment and, and the atmosphere was right, and, and it's just like, wow, man. I mean, 
really at the end of the day for me, it's like it's really hard to express in words what I've witnessed and what I've seen and what I've heard. And then to get on stage and rocking with them and, and then for them to accept me without like going, hey, you're not doing what we doing, so you know. I was also nervous because I didn't know how people were going to react. Because I mean, I, I've never been here before. I, I never uh, played with uh, other Africans making music and doing things like that. So for, for me, that that was like it was it was touching in the heart at the same time. Since rock and roll began, the Caucasian crew has always taken inspiration from black music. In a way, the musicians and the audience have always been looking for the perfect beat, whether it be from the Mississippi Delta, Kingston, Jamaica, or the cradle of civilization itself, Africa. Back in the day, musicians seemed a lot more open to global influences, but then the record industry got involved and it became a commodity for taking your money. And don't get me wrong, a lot of great music came out of this dynamic. I mean, I'm a big fan of pop music itself. But in the 21st century, it seems like lessons learned have been forgotten. The music of the day has become increasingly conservative, if not darn right stagnant. You know the kind of thing, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, etc. So once again, we have to look to the unknown for a new way of approaching this global form of expression. I first got involved with Africa Express when Damon asked me to film the event at the Jam in Brixton. I mean, as black as I am, I mean, my knowledge of African music is fairly limited and it's taken a talented honky to really open my eyes to the whole world of possibility that's out there. I guess, you know, the whole picture that the media paints of Africa as being all kind of doom and gloom. But, you know, one of Sun Ra's musicians once said to me that, you know, you can't have anything beautiful without a bit of ugly in it. And I think that's really true of Africa. In the West, people think that music is something that kids do. But for many people on this planet, it's an integral part of their daily lives, informing, inspiring, and bringing people together. I mean, take, for example, the whole love music, hate racism thing, which included a lot of the Africa Express artists. That's done more to unite people than politics, school, and even religion. So I know this shit works.
1977 as the DJ at the Roxy, I famously or infamously kind of bridged the gap between punk and reggae. And I think what reggae got out of that relationship really was exposure. And that's not to be taken lightly because once they were given that exposure, I mean, look at what it's done today. I mean, reggae has become part of the fabric of contemporary pop music. So maybe the same thing can happen with African music. There's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't.